Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The Aztecs, the sixth Doctor Who story, which, and this is also the first four-parter of the series since An Earthly Child. Yeah, it took five more stories to get to the next four-parter, and the next four-parter after this is a further six stories down the line, it's it's the Romans. Next season you've got another six, you've got another two six-parters in this season, a three-parter, another six-parter, and a two-parter in the way <sighs> four passes will become more common in the future especially in season three um, and then te uh, a bit more common throughout the 70s and 80s so yeah and i think the four part format works the best and i think the aztecs is the first four part story to get it right although i don't know if any child was the first one so with an earthly child i thought episode one could have been its own standalone episode and the remaining three could have been a three part story separately and um, with only the ending to tie the stories in like they usually do in the first couple of seasons they have an ending tying it into the next story on occasions but in this one's case it's because um it's works at a four-part story it's a very well for uh made four-part story and i think they got it the story format uh well for this one the plot sees Barbara being mistaken for a goddess, well, a, a Aztec god, and so she become, she tries to end sacri sacrifices. However, the this uh, butcher character here, um, who, who's the character? Not sure, but he's a character. Um, He's probably got his got the name on the screen now. I don't remember the character's name, but uh, he doesn't believe Barbara as a goddess when she stops, tries to stop a sacrifice, and calls her a false goddess and looks onto the camera like this. But that's okay. The captain does at the end of episode one. That's okay because he's kind of talking to himself. But then at the start of episode two, the entire all of his lines from the last couple of seconds of the episode are him looking into the camera which doesn't quite work as well because some of those lines he was talking to Barbara and the Doctor and speaking of uh, people looking to the camera before I rewatched this story I thought uh, this one had some of the worst moments of people looking to the cameras and talking and there are some moments that remind me of that it's mainly the worst case scenario I had beforehand was Susan looking to the camera talking about how she didn't want to get married to someone she didn't love or know and she does do a kind of do that in a little bit in this one. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's mainly in the 60s stories and also in some of the New Who stories uh, that you have cameras just looking away from people who they're talking to and talking into the camera. Uh, Love and Monsters is kind of an exception to this rule because that's kind of presented in a kind of a vlog form in a way. So that's an exception to their rule. Um, I don't know, it's just that it just feels a bit odd out, out of place, and I really don't like it when the characters kind of just talk to more to the audience than to other characters, unless it's unless they kind of are addressing to characters and just trying not to look at them. But in some cases, it doesn't quite as work as well. And here, before re watching it, I thought that had been the worst case scenario. Turns out it wasn't quite as much as I remembered, but still. Looking at the audience and not really talking to people does work a bit better in some cases though, like in the Nerfy Child when the Doctor's looking away from Ian and Barbara and kind of smiling to himself a little bit. Or when he's looking at some of the trinkets in the junkyard. Anyway, that aside, because it's not as much of a problem now than it was before I rewatched the story. The rest of the story is basically the Travellers now trying to get away whilst trying to keep up the facade of being with the Aztecs and Barbara's trying to keep up the side of being the goddess and the others as her servants. Susan's now placed in some kind of school because she was against the sacrifice and they think oh she made Barbara uh, or Yachaxa as they think 
uh, stop the sacrifice and she broke a law, bloody blood, blah blah. So they sent her to a kind of a school to learn. Which then brings us all to the marriage with uh, stuff, and she is supposed to be trying to to be punished for going against this uh, way. Um, in in the meantime, he's fighting to be a guard, and as I mentioned last time, he gets framed for assaulting the high priest. And the doctor is basically in the garden with old people most of the time, and accidentally gets engaged to a, uh, he get he gets engaged to a a woman uh, called Kim Camille, Camille, not Camille. It's a uh, Cam Kamika. I thought she was a good character, by the way. Kamika was a very good character. I think I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have minded if she had married the Doctor and gone on to travel in time and space. Yeah, she's it's better than Katarina. To be honest, most of them are better than Katarina. Just the fact that they actually got more than five episodes to show it, besides Adam Mitchell. Uh, but even he had a bit more personality in the two episodes he was in than Katarina did in five. And in terms of the story, a little bit of one and about a third of the next. Yeah, so I'm sure Kamika would have been a great companion slash wife. I don't know if she would have been around for too long. I'm not sure how popular she would be, but I think she would have been good. Heck, I got a bit more character development in this story from her than I did with Susan throughout most of the season. Uh, maybe excluding the first three stories, but, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, eventually they all have to escape. They do find a way to get back to the TARDIS and open the tomb so they can escape later on. And, yeah, it works really well, and I think, had this story been a six-parter, I think it would have felt dragged out. So I'm glad they only they allowed it to be only four. So that's good, and I think it does a really good job at... Sh telling the story within four parts, heck. It, so, towards the end, in the final two episodes, the pacing is actually really good, at, and a bit uh, quicker paced. I suppose it's already got some of the most important stuff out of the way in the previous two. Then it can now speed up things in the latter two episodes. So, yeah, it's really good and really enjoyable. It also allows a little bit of time for the next episodes uh, tie in with the next episode at the end without having to be too much of a uh, too much annoying and yeah as well as also the final fight before the end and um, hmm, they also have a little bit of the seeds sorry the keys of Marinus at the very start with the TARDIS materialising from the planet I'm not sure if they needed to include that the keys of Marinus opened well without having a link from Marco Polo at the start, nor did Marco Polo at the end of that story had, he, had the TARDIS arrive on Marinus. I think it was pretty well as it was. So I don't think they needed to worry about having it at the start of this one. They could have just started with the TARDIS arriving in that ancient Aztec times, maybe another mini scene just before that. At the end of this one, it links into the sensor rights. I think that's done a bit better. So, overall, the Aztecs is a really good story. I don't think it's particularly perfect, and like I said, I still have those... I did have those issues with the people looking into the camera. I still do with other episodes. It's what, it's, this one's not so much anymore. It was the prime example, but now not so much. And so it's... Uh, yes, yeah, a really good story. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. <laughs> So yeah, that's the Aztecs, a really good story, really entertaining, and well written. I think it's John Lucroti's best script, uh, considering the third story he would write. I don't think he does any in season two. So I think the other story besides Marco Polo and this one, the other one is Massacre in season three. So considering that story, yeah, this one's easily the best. So, yeah, that's the Aztecs. That was a really great story. But I haven't rewatched the last two stories of season one yet. I will do by the time the reviews come around. But from memory, season one takes a bit of a downturn from here. We had a bit of a uh, slow but steady start, and then it got much better halfway through. 
But for this final quarter of the series, I think it kind of goes down the hill a bit. So, yeah. Next time we will be looking at the Sensorites. So, we'll, I'll give this a rewatch and see what it's like. But I'm not expecting to love it. Uh, I didn't really have that much enjoyment on it the last time I saw it. And same for Reign of Terror. Even le In fact, even less so than Reign of Terror. In fact, I'm these are probably going to be the weakest two of the season, probably. Uh, that's anticipation. That's my... Uh, pre we watch thoughts and then season two when we get to it will be we'll have a great start uh, The first two episodes are very uh, first two stories are a great start So yeah, that's my review of Doctor Who the Aztecs next time. It's the sensor rights and also uh, Before that the next review uh, Film review will be Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. So that's next and then we'll be on the sensor rights So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time Goodbye. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nick Payne Extra YouTube channel. In this one's case, the case is bent for some reason. In this one's case, the... I'm sorry, this case is bent for some reason. I don't remember the character's name, but he's... I... Uh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, one of his new friends uh, is a woman, don't worry, uh, people of 1960s.